Have you ever wondered what the concept of deacons, elders, and pastors is supposed to be, and what's supposed to look like in the 21st century? I mean, there's so many different types of ways to do governance. And when it comes to the idea of a church board, some wonder, is this even biblical? What should it look like? Well, what's its purpose? Well, guess what? We've got an answer for you today. So here we go. In 2013, we planted a church, Summit Park Church, we moved up to Kansas City, Missouri to start this church. And as you know, when you're starting a church, one of the things you have to do is you need to find a church board. And so as we started collecting the people and people started saying they're going to be a part of the church, we got to the point eventually where we, we were able to set up a board. And so we you know, had selected these folks and we're sitting around the table with these people and, you know, they're excited about the opportunity they have and they understand the role. Um, uh, well, they may not have understood the role, but they understood the, um, you know, the, the, the concept, the, concept yeah. the benefit of what they're going to be able to be a part of. And they were honored to be a part of it. And, uh, and so one of the things we had to do is talk to them more about the roles and responsibilities right. and help them understand what it is that they do and how this fits into the overall context of the church. And what I have found, and I know you found to be true, is a lot of uh, people that are on church boards don't have an understanding right. of it. And it all starts with the pastor being able to articulate right. what it is that a board is supposed to do. What's their role? What's the responsibility? Um, and so that's why in today's episode, we want to talk about the uh, the roles and responsibilities. And we're going to look specifically at seven essential purposes of a church board. And this is really part one of a two-part uh, series here on on it as we break these down over this episode and then in the next episode, helping uh, you understand the seven essential purposes of a board so that way as you as you you know recruit board members, as people come onto the board, they're able to understand what this thing is all about. Yep. So are you ready to go? We're going to go. we do this? Let's right. jump into it. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a few of these seven. First is simply this, the board serves as spiritual support. It's very important for board members to understand the spiritual support that they play in, for, for the pastor and for the church. So we want to make sure that they know that it's important for them to be praying regularly for the church. Are they are they praying about the needs and the opportunities and the things that are uh, pressing for the church and for just praying for the people of the church that God would that God would have His hand on them. So we want to have them praying for that. We also want that you, you also want the board members praying for the pastor and the other leaders yeah. as well that they are. Um, just going to the Lord, asking for wisdom and help for for the pastor, and and if that's you, then they're asking. Well, you're asking them to pray for you, basically, exactly. And, exactly. and it's okay to ask for that. You want exactly. them to, and they want to do that, but you have to articulate that. And then you also want to make sure that they're praying for each other. And one of the things that sometimes I think they they get the first two, but then when it's like, well, praying for each other, they're maybe not thinking about that as much. But these group and in, in most churches, this group of board members is is serving as the key leadership right. of the church, and so they need to be unified. Absolutely, they need to be supporting each other in prayer, and 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 really uh, coming together as a group of individuals to help see things happen in the church. So they really do, and and I will tell you, I've seen it over and over. When board members pray for each other, and then when you hit a bump mm, at yeah. the board table, and you will, when if board members have been praying for each other, yeah. it's a lot better to move through that bump together. Yeah. If you're not praying for each other, it's easier for board members to go. Meh, meh, meh. So yeah. that's absolutely that spiritual support. Yeah. Uh, a board member can sometimes feel like, oh, you know, yeah, you know, oh no. That is absolutely critical. That's why it's listed number one. Number two is missional fulfillment. No. Uh, let me tell you, I, I, when I do uh, board training uh, for pastors and boards, I'll tell them their very first highest level role they'll, uh, or uh, responsibility they ever do is to engage the ministry services of the pastor. So maybe you're the pastor and some board has you know, chosen to have you come in and be their pastor. That's their very first because that charts the direction for the church. Mm -hmm. The second most important thing that they'll ever do is to protect the mission. And that's yeah. our second point here, missional fulfillment. Um, the board's role, and we talk about this. In fact, we talk about this in the church board track of training, which we're making available to you. If you're uh, watching or listening to this podcast, um, if you'll go to churchuniversity.com, and um, click on the church board track and put in 50 off. That's five zero and then lowercase O-F-F. -F. 
you can get the full board training that's uh, 57 videos, downloads, templates, everything that'll help your church board be better. And one of the uh, one of the things, well, amongst many we talk about is missional fulfillment, the responsibility of the board to protect the mission. If your mission is something like to reach spiritually lost people with the gospel, um, the board is not to be involved in the nitty gritty of strategy. The board is to be involved in protecting that mission, yeah. making sure the church is staying on mission. And uh, when boards do this yeah. and pastors are involved in strategy, it's the best of all worlds, and you're going to see good things happen. Yeah. Um, and let me also note on the subject of missional fulfillment, it's the board's role to guard against what's called mission drift. Now, what is mission mm -hmm. drift? Yeah. Mission drift is when... You, you say you're about something, but over time, it just begins to fade away and change. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you, you can look, I'm not being critical of any specific organization, denomination, or ministry, but you can look at some that have been on point at one point decades ago. Yeah. And yet today, they're a shell of what they used to be, mm -hmm. and in large part, it's because a governing board did not protect the mission and they drifted and they drifted off of their primary purpose. And this is so important because this is just human nature. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you look we'll at life, that. we all have this tendency to drift. It's like you go to start working out the new year because you yeah. got these goals and you know, yeah. and then over time, well, I'll sleep in this day yeah. and then before long, you just, you just slide away. And it's it's just one of the natural tendencies that happens. But then when it comes to the spiritual side of things, the enemy wants to do everything he exactly. can to get us off focus and off course of what we need to be accomplishing. And so that's why, yeah, that's this huge point. Yeah, okay. there you go. Number three is the policy guidance. Now, <laughs> this can really seem like, oh my well, goodness. This is exciting. This <laughs> is exciting. Um, this is the third of the seven essentials of a church board. Now, let me talk to you about that. doesn't sound very spiritual, but it's critically important. Um, and, and by the way, when I talk about policies, I do recommend that you have um, smaller policies. You know, if I ask you, I got a church with a policy manual that thick, a church with a policy manual that thick, which one is growing? And you know the answer to that one. It's the one that's got the little small policy manual. Yeah. Um, but it is important that you have something in, in, in uh, set in place that helps guide your church when things come up. Uh, but be careful that you don't create policies as a reaction to something. Mm -hmm. You know, the church that has a policy manual that thick, what, they're do what they've done is over the years, they've reacted to everything that happened. Well, the van broke down 50 miles away from town, so therefore you can't drive the van 50 miles away from town. You know, this happened over here, so you yeah. can't do it. Don't do it that way. Yeah. Be proactive on things that you think the church needs to be uh, have, have some written guidelines on. Here, here's what it does. Policies set direction. They don't do things, but they set direction. Uh, policies define a course of action, and policies are prudent and wise. The best organizations, the best ministries, the growing organizations have policies mm -hmm. that guide them forward. Are they going to be adjusted? Yes. Policies are not like your mission. Mission doesn't change much at all. Right. Policies will shift from time to time, and that's okay. But it's important that the board is signing off on those. Correct policies are, uh, I'm going to use the word uh, <laughs> preparatory, if you can use that word, not reactionary. So if you'll do that, um, you'll see the church be positioned for the best days ahead. The, so let me give you the three that we're covering today. And uh, the next episode, we're going to cover four more. The board's essential. It's essential they provide spiritual report uh, support. It's essential that they do missional fulfillment, protect the mission. And it's essential that they do policy guidance to set the framework for the direction and future of the church. So there you have it, Jonathan. What else do we want to cover? Well, that's good. I want to mention that we have a PDF that we want to give to all the yes. listeners and viewers today. It's called the 18 Rules of Engagement for Church Boards. And so this breaks down uh, some of the roles and responsibilities more. This, this discussion we're having today and in the next episode is more about the purposes of the board. But we do have a resource that we want to give to you uh, that's specific to the roles and responsibilities. And yeah. really, we break it down into 18 different things that they need to be kind of mindful of. You could use 
this as a great tool for training and orienting newborn uh, board members yeah. or just doing a refresher with current ones. And we have churches that use this uh, as they have board meetings. They say, okay, well, let's talk about this this one of the 18 today or let's these talk a couple right. of these 18. So to get this PDF, just go to leaders.church slash rules, R-U-L-E-S, leaders.church slash rules. You'll get the 18 rules of engagement for Church Board's PDF. For free, it's free. free PDF. Yep, yep, yep. Just want to make that available to you. So make sure to grab that if you want. And then as well, if you have not yet subscribed, we want to have you subscribe on YouTube, subscribe on the podcast platforms, make sure wherever you're watching or listening to this, you can make sure to stay tuned for upcoming church tips. And uh, with that being the case, thank you so much for being with us today. We'll look forward to seeing you next time. Hey, Jonathan here, real quick before you go. Everything in your ministry rises and falls on your leadership. So investing in your leadership is essential to staying healthy and growing the ministry. And that's why I want to invite you to join us inside the Leaders.Church membership. This online streaming service for pastors gives you access to more than 300 videos plus training material to level up your leadership and improve your ministry skills. If you'd like to do that, I want to invite you to go to leaders.church slash boost. Again, that's leaders.church slash boost. Well, thanks again for joining us on the Church Tips Podcast. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.